Hey guys, Insomnia here with some more AFK Arena, and tonight we are on the free-to-play account on the test server, and the heroes are up. Um, Ions and Alberto are up, so I want to go ahead and check them out. As you can see right here, Dimensional 61 Days. You are going to have an opportunity free for three days, so you can actually try out the hero, see how much you like them, and then see if you actually do want to purchase them which as you can see, 61 days remaining. The same for the white devil, devil Alberto. Let's go ahead and look at the exchange. So this exchange, we do have almost the exact same frame as we've seen before. So again, save all of your resources. And of course, they're going to let us accumulate the resources. As you can see in the bottom, the exchange ends in 53 days. Um, which is crazy. So you can actually exchange for her in 54 days, meaning that you have ample time to collect the resources to get the heroes. But remember, big problem with this is you're foregoing Arthur. You're not going to get the emblems of space that you could get out of here if you do have Arthur built. You're not going to get Wukong. You're not going to get the red chest for pretty much the next two months which will bring us into November, which will bring us into December. So unfortunately, that will be a, a huge, huge investment for both of these heroes. But I wanna check out what they're doing in here with the dimensionals in the shop. Visiting merchants are here. Both dimensional heroes, as you can see, are here and their gear. So if you look at the price, 85% off, that is correct, folks. 85% off, meaning your $99.99 hero is actually going to be $14.99 on US. Super, super cheap considering the last one was $50 or a lot of them were $100 for the purchase. So not only did they make them free to play because you can accumulate the resources over time to get the heroes. If you are free to play, you should be able to get them both. Um, doing the math, a lot of players have said you can get them both. But there you go. They are going to be $14.99, which is absolutely phenomenal. I, I love that. That is a perfect price point versus $50 each. For their gear, it is going to remain $49.99. So it is going to be $50 for the gear for either hero. Remember, if you go with Eins, you'll actually get the dimensional caster gear. Um, but if you do go with Albedo, you will get the gear, the dimensional plate gear, but it will be for Arthur as well, which is the reason I definitely want to pick this up because I will have gear for Arthur, a whole nother set, just like we did with Nakaruru. We'll have a no, whole nother set of dimensional gear, and then we don't have to buy it. So looking at the gear itself, it has been showing up here in the guild store. Um, it shows up in this little bottom slot. I was hoping they would add a couple more slots for it, but unfortunately at this time they have not. But there we go. So it is going to be the exact same exchange that we've seen before for the hero. So essentially for a lot of players, you can buy one of them. You can get one free to play. If you are all free to play, 61 days, you have two months to save up resources, which again, a little disappointed. We couldn't exchange them early because you're going to be filling your mailboxes. But if they're exchanged at the same time, I don't think you're going to have the capacity to get both of them. J just thinking about this, think thinking about it logically, thinking it through. I think with the caps we have in place, you're not going to have enough resources to get both of them because the exchange time is going to be the same time. Oh, that means you have to choose one or, or the other and you have to do it re with resources. The only thing would be is if, if they raise the caps, which I'm not sure. I don't know. If, I don't think there's a way to check the caps or see the caps. Um, you wouldn't be able to get them if that's the case. If they did not increase the caps of what you can hold here, you're just going to cap out and essentially everything will go to the mailbox. In the mailbox, it only stays for seven days meaning that you'll only be able to get one or the other. You'll not be able to get both as free to play. Ju just my initial thought, if I am completely wrong, please let me know in the comments um, what you guys think, but, but it seems that is going to be 
unfortunately the way that it might go down and I really hope that is not the case, but one or the other heroes. So let's take a look at their skills. We've seen kind of the skill cards, but we haven't been able to see the actual skills that they have. So looking here, very, very cool effect. Um, a lot shorter than I thought. I, I thought she would be a little bit taller, which is kind of a funny thing to say about a anime character. But as you can see here, she has this giant dark wielding ax, which is very, very cool looking. So looking at Ginagapa, um, teleports instantly to the most densely populated area, which we have seen before dealing 300% AOE damage. Level two is 55% is converted into a shield. Level three, 65% of total damage to the enemy is converted into a shield. So overall, very, very powerful ultimate ability, which brings us to the shield Lord. Um, she teleports next to a random ally that is currently near an enemy dealing 220% damage to the enemy, stunning them for four seconds. That is a long stun. If the um, Ains or Ains is an ally, she will prioritize him with this ability above other allies, which is pretty cool. So if they do have perfect synergy together, Blackguard, she receives a shield. So she, she is tank. So she is tank, tank. So double tank there, which is very, very good to see. Um, so she'll receive a shield, which protects the lowest health and protects them for five seconds. While the shield exists, nor a Beldo, nor the ally she is protecting can be controlled by enemies, which is very, very cool. And she shall bear the damage instead of the hero, which is cool. Of course, she prioritizes Ainz first, which again is very, very cool. Has a lot of mitigation there, which brings us to her passive ability. During battle, her crit resistance is increased by 35 points. If she is dealt a critical strike, the attacker's attack rating is reduced by 30% for five seconds which is very cool. As you can see, her crit resistance is increased by 50 points. And then of course, the critical strike is attack rating is reduced by 50%. But let's go ahead and look at the signature item. And again, this is what we haven't been able to see. It's kind of the breakdown of what it looks like. So during battle, the defense of all dimensional heroes are increased by 15% for every dimensional hero that is in the allied formation. So essentially running dimensionals together is not only going to give you bonuses when you're running with her, but it is also going to give you bonuses for the um, actual faction bonuses of running three, four, and five together, which the effect can stack two times. As you can see here, the plus 10, the, a defensive rating is increased by 25%. Plus 20 stacks three times. And then during battle, the attack rating of all dimensional heroes are increased by 15%. For every dimensional hero that is in the allied formation. So not only are they going to be getting three, essentially, if you're running three dimensional heroes, they are going to get a 25% increase of defense. They're going to get a 15% increase to attack rating, which is going to be very, very powerful. This will absolutely put dimensional heroes on the map. This will put them through the roof, especially because we know the survivability of Arthur and the damage that he puts out. This is going to increase his, again, survivability, his defense literally through the roof, and he is gonna be able to put out even more damage, which is very, very cool to see. So looking at our furniture bonuses, uh, she enters a rage which lasts 10 seconds whenever um, Ainz dies or whenever the first ally on her team dies during the enraged state, she's immune to all damage and control effects and 250% of her defense rating is converted into her attack rating. Wow, so that is just going to supercharge her when somebody dies. So essentially she wants to keep everyone alive. If she is currently using her black guard ability to protect, the enraged state shall be initiated once her black guard ends. And of course, the 9 of 9, 80% of the damage caused during the enraged state is converted into health. So not only does she come with a lot of defense, she comes with her own heals. She comes with a stun. She is going to be an absolute tank. This is how a tank needs to be built. Um, not all miss, unfortunately, but this is how a tank is going to be absolutely phenomenal. Very, very cool looking artwork as well. So the arena trials, we're not really going to get into the arena right now, but I do just want to test her against the dummy to see exactly what it looks like. 
and see her ability. So we're actually going to slow it down here. As you can see, she teleports to an area. There is the ultimate ability. Very, very cool looking. There is her shield, which I believe it was the black guard. Boom. Does an AoE ability there. Very, very cool. <laughs> it looks very sweet. That'll, that'll be very, very cool to see her in formations with other heroes, especially with her bouncing around the, the um, map. As you can see with her son there, she has the guard up. She is just everywhere. Going to do a, a insane amount of defense. But the really, really big thing to point out with her is the defense that she's bringing to dimensionals and the attack she's bringing to dimensionals. So now, essentially, at this point, we are going to have formations that are built around dimensional heroes such as her because she is going to bring so much. Whether it's going to be Arthur, whether it's going to be um, Ainz, whether it's going to be Nakaruru, Ezio, depending who it is, it, it's going to be a very, very interesting combination. Which brings us to probably one of the best heroes uh, best looking heroes probably in the game. I think he is absolutely amazing looking. Again, they did really good on the artwork. I know with the crossover and Overlord. So let's look at his abilities. So Falling Down begins chant with last five seconds. Again, we never knew exactly how much it was going to last, which after 460% damage is dealt to all enemy targets. If the chant is interrupted, he recovers 500 energy. So he'll get half back. Because remember, 1,000 energy, he casts his ult. This will give him half of his energy back if he's interrupted. Level 3 damage is increased to 580%. Wow, that, that is a ton of damage. 580% damage. Remember, if he's getting the, the defense boost and he's getting the attack boost um, of Albedo, it will be very, very powerful because he will be that much stronger. Brings us to the goal of all life is death. After 24 seconds of battle, all enemies lose 30% of their health and are stunned for 4 seconds. As you can see, level 3, enemies lose 50% of their current health. So 24 seconds, they're losing 50% of current health. That's not that that that's crazy. That is absolutely crazy to lose 50% of their health. So essentially, if you have a hero at 50%, they're going to 25% after 24 seconds. So all you have to do is, is keep him alive and they are stunned. And it's a four second stun. Wow. The, these heroes are going to be formation changers. These are going to be game changer heroes. Magic Caster. Normal attacks are changed to the following abilities, which are used in the cycle. Remember, Arthur increases the normal attacks. So if the normal attacks are changed to the following, we have to make sure that Arthur is going to boost this, causing more damage, causing them to actually cast quicker. So Call Greater Thunder deals 240% damage to enemy targets. So that is single target. Gravity Maelstrom deals 210 damage to enemy target and other nearby targets. So that is an AE. And then True Dark deals 180% damage to the enemy target and prevents the enemy from using their ultimate ability for five seconds, which again, that is a single target there. It says enemy target, not um, nearby targets. As you can see, more damage from two, three, and then four increases the True Dark prevents the enemy target from using their ability for eight seconds. So eight seconds, you are gonna have heroes that are locked out of their ultimate ability. Very, very powerful again, which brings us to steady preparations. At the beginning of battle, he received his shield equal to 40% of his max health, which lasts six seconds. So essentially, we come out at a minute 30, six seconds, he gets a shield. While the shield exists, he's immune to con enemy control abilities and continues to chant, gaining 70 energy points and a permanent plus four attack rating, plus eight defense rating increase per second. So remember, he's doing this for 10 or 6 seconds, and he's getting more attack, more defense, all by himself. So essentially, the time it takes for Sophia to power up her alt, he is going to sit there and just chant. Once the shield disappears, he ceases chanting. As you can see, attack rating level 2 is increased to 6 per second and defense by 10. And then once the 
attributes have increased six times, he receives an additional 50 crit amplification points and 30 attack speed. So he is going to have his own crit amplification and his own attack speed built into this chant. As long as you can get the first six seconds of him, his shielded ability, he is just going to absolutely destroy. And we haven't even looked at the signature item yet. The chanting phase of the ultimate falling down is omitted the first time it is used meaning that he isn't going to have to use the chat. It is going to take it out. Um, plus 10, the chanting phase of the ultimate ability is emitted the first two times, three times, and then the ultimate ability falling down deals an extra 30% damage. Wow, a 30% boost when you look there. Again, absolutely crazy. Looking at the furniture, which I, I'm even worried to look. Every eight seconds during the battle, the damage and debuff duration of the Magic Caster abilities are increased by 200%. The effects of the ability, the goal of all life is death, will take effect 15 seconds into battle. So we would no longer have to wait for the 24 seconds here. 15 seconds, they would lose half their health. So essentially, if there's a target that you haven't hit, they're going to lose 50% of their full health after 15 seconds of battle which is going to be crazy, crazy strong. So let's go ahead. We'll look at him really quick. I want to see exactly how he looks in here. All right, so again, we'll slow it down. So he comes in, he starts the chant, which there he is powering up attack, defense, attack, defense, attack, defense. Six seconds, he's fully powered up. There's the single, which there is the dark matter. And here he is powering up for the alt, stuns everyone, does a nuke. He just nuked the entire battlefield and killed everything. Here he is powering up, ultimate ability, boom. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. Such a very, very cool new hero to see. And look at that, just powering up full power. So very similar to Sophia, um, when she powers up with the Falling Sun ability, if it is powered up maximum, it just does absolutely crazy, crazy high damage, as you can see there. Takes a couple seconds, powered up, boom, kills everybody. Wow, that is absolutely crazy. I cannot wait to have both of these heroes gear them up, especially with signature items. Um, going through the rotations faster, I can definitely see the new tanking artifact on her just to increase the survivability of everybody else, as well as increasing the attack rating for the rest of our heroes, especially Nakaruru. Going to be very, very tough to beat. And of course, increasing his attack rating and his defense as well. Hopefully, Arthur's aura will work with him. We know it'll bring the crit. We know it'll bring um, more power to him, which is just going to be crazy crazy because now out of the teams we have the god tier team we have Sophia Iran um, we have the Damon team now we will have formations that are dimensional formations I could see Rowan working in here really well I could see the twins being absolutely phenomenal in this team comp um, a, a couple other things just really come to mind when we look at the two brand new heroes so let me know in the comments what you think. Again, super disappointed with how we're getting the heroes. So we're going to have to save all of our resources essentially for 61 days. So the redemption period, as you can see, um, is going to be in 53 days. So 54 days we're going to have to save resources to get these heroes. And if the caps are not increased, you're only going to be able to get one of them, which again, very, very disappointing. I hope I am totally wrong. I would love to be totally wrong on these heroes um, and how we are going to acquire them. But they said, one, they would give us a big, big discount. If you did not catch the patch notes a little bit earlier, there was actually a hot fix. Added a new promotion where players are able to purchase dimensional heroes at a discounted price. That is the 85% off. Each player account will be limited to one discounted purchase, meaning that you can buy one hero at $15 um, the other hero you cannot. The other hero you would have to buy, pay, I believe, full price or, or full price for because it would only be one that is discounted. And then, of course, the crossover event is here. 
with the trials that, that are going on. And as you can see here, the same with Elbato um, will be available for purchase. And again, you can only have one at this time. So, so unfortunately, they did do a second hot fix, as you've seen here, adjusted the value of the signature item, guardian overseer and exclusive furniture. So she was out for a couple of hours um, and she already got hot fixed. They, they nerfed the signature item that she had and the furniture abilities, um, toned them down a little because people were play, playing and Cena was super, super overpowered. Um, you couldn't kill her. So, so it was very, very broken when they came out. So a second hot fix came out, which was just a couple hours ago. So they are completely hot fixed. But let me know in the comment what you think. Who are you most impressed by? I absolutely love them both. Um, I think the Magic Caster is going to be absolutely vital for some of the teams. But again, if you're not running Elbeto with him, um, you're really going to be missing out on the defense and you're going to be missing out on the attack rating that they bring. So running them both together is really going to be nice. I think even running them two with Nakaruru, giving her more attack, giving her more defense, um, might really increase her ability, especially because she has the stuns. So again, let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.